Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.4 and Razbam Simulations M2000C Mirage Module. Welcome to tutorial 4, Matra Super 530D. Today we're going to learn how to make use of this semi-active radar-guided air-to-air -air missile, a Fox-1, and uh, all the different ways that it can be deployed on the M2000C. This is the main air-to-air -air armament of the aircraft in BVR combat. It has a range of 10 nautical miles at sea level and a maximum range of 23 nautical miles at 40,000 feet. So of course, as always, the higher and faster you are, the greater the range you're going to get out of this missile. You can see it's quite a chunky boy. Uh, it's possible to carry two of these missiles on the M2000C, as shown here. In addition, in a normal air-to-air -air loadout, you would also be able to carry two uh, magic infrared missiles, uh, and you probably tend to want to carry the centerline fuel tank as well. Uh, but today, just to keep things nice and simple, I'm only carrying the 530. So, let's uh, jump into the cockpit, and straight away, let's see how we can get ourselves set up to fire the missile. I'm going to come out of pause and go into active pause, so we can start... Uh, fiddling around here. And the first thing we want to take a little look at here is this panel to the right-hand side of the radar. Uh, I'll pause while we go over its uh, controls. It's called the PPA, or the Post Preparation Armament. Uh, this is basically where you make all your air-to-air uh, -air weapon selections. Uh, so we can see here that we have a missile indicated in this button, uh, because we can see miss. Uh, and that's for the 530. This button is for the 530. This button is for, oh, actually, that's auto or manual release. This is the button for the magic. Uh, so, yeah, you would usually have 530s shown here and magics shown here. P means that the missile is uh, prepared. It's already gone through its uh, startup. And miss means that there are missiles of this type present. If I come out of pause, if I click this button, that's me actually powering the missiles off. If I click it again, I power them on, the P will flash, uh, and after a short delay, uh, the missiles will be prepped and ready to use. I have a test switch here. If I push the test switch into the down position, uh, then for a moment on the VTB, we actually get uh, an inventory screen. Uh, so I can see that I'm carrying 125 rounds of gun, uh, and I've got one 530 on each wing. So that just allows me to confirm the current loadout. Um, first thing we're going to have to do to make sure we can use the missile is ensure that the CNM switch is in its middle or neutral position. Uh, this switch allows you to go into a gun uh, or a magic override position, but when it's in the middle, it allows you to use whichever missile is selected normally. So we want to make sure this switch is in middle. Next thing we want to confirm is that indeed we have a missile and it's prepped. So P and miss means that we're happy with that. This selector here allows us to switch to firing the left-hand missile, the right-hand missile, or in the middle position it will fire automatically. I think normally it fires left and right, if I remember correctly. Uh, you also have this button here. Uh, this is the firing mode selector. It can be in total or par modes. Uh, in total mode, it will fire two missiles, one after another. In par mode, it will fire partial, which means it will fire one missile and then the other. Uh, so for today, I'm going to put it in par, so we have the option to just fire one missile. Uh, in total mode, you would continue to hold uh, the micro bit second stage trigger, uh, and if you hold it for long enough, it would fire one missile, then the next. Uh, next thing we're going to do is go over here, uh, over to the uh, weapon selector uh, panel here, and you can see we've got 530 available. I'm going to select 530. S means it's selected, and then P would mean it's prepared. We're then going to go master arm on and with master arm on you can see the missile is prepared in effect ready to fire uh, before we continue we're going to take a little look up on the hud these are the indications that you should expect on the hud once you're in air to air master mode and master arm is on it confirms to me that we have the 530 selected it confirms that i have uh, a missile on the gauche position or left and a missile on the Dwat position or right. Uh, apologies to those of you who are actual French speakers. Uh, I'm now going to come out of pause and uh, we're going to get ready to employ the missile. So um, this missile can of course only be fired uh, in single target track or, or uh, I think that's pick indicated as pick here. 
Uh, but I'm going to go PID initially, um, and we're going to go ahead and lock something up. There we go, we're going to take that. Uh, and so yeah, currently we're in what is in effect TWS. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pause. Actually, let's see if I can pause, there we go, with uh, the information I want on the screen. Um, so yeah, we're currently in what is in effect TWS. Uh, the missile cannot be launched in TWS, however I could go ahead and fire and what would happen is the system would automatically switch to single target track and then fire, so that's nothing to worry about too much. Uh, and you'll see that we now have some additional symbology on the HUD. Uh, we have these rings here, this is basically uh, a an aiming device, we want to put uh, the target box inside these rings before we fire. Um, now we've got numbers above the left and right missiles, that's the estimated time of flight, uh, so it would take 27 seconds to strike our target. Uh, we also have the range uh, indication, kind of a DLZ, on the right hand side here. We've got the current range in nautical miles, and on the left hand side we have ticks for the maximum ranges. We have a long bar here, which is actually the maximum range with manoeuvring for the target. Usually if we were further out there'd be another shorter line further up, and that'd be maximum range without the target doing defensive manoeuvres. So you can see here that we're actually well within a good range, and minimum range is indicated here. Tier uh, means that we can fire, that's actually our shoot cue, so we, we would actually be able to take a shot right now. Uh, and PSIC is just reminding us that if we pull the trigger now, uh, the radar will automatically switch to single target track in order to prosecute that target. So let's demonstrate uh, firing in TWS with an automated switch uh, to STT. I'm going to come out here, uh, I'm going to disengage the autopilot. You can see a dashed box. If I maneuver so the target is inside the HUD, I get a solid box. I'm now going to depress nose wheel steering. And we're doing an IFF query. And I got no response whatsoever from that target. Let's do it again. Depress nose wheel steering. No response. This is confirmed hostile. I'm going to put the circle on the target. I'm going to depress second stage trigger. And wait. And that's Fox 1. Oh, it didn't fire. That's interesting. It didn't fire. Why did it not fire? Let's try again. There we go. Missiles away. Not sure why it didn't fire the first time. I think the first time I pulled the trigger it went into the STT, and then the second time it actually fired. So let's see. Uh, we now have, let me pause actually, you'll now note it actually fired the right hand one first. There's no DWAT indicator at all, so we now no longer have a right missile, but we now have the time to impact indicated here. So we have eight seconds time to impact. So let's come out of pause. We must maintain the lock, the whole flight of the missile, otherwise it will miss. Target's actually uh, locking me up. Oh, and that's a kill. That's a kill. Okay, let's... Uh, Reset using the weapon switch middle there. Uh, sorry, weapon switch depress. Uh, and that's me broken that lock. Let's grab another target, but this time we're going to go straight into single target track. Uh, and I actually don't have another target showing up here right now. Also, one thing to note is that in yellow text, uh, we actually have what's called a kind of memory contact. So we lost that lock, but it's going to continue to give us information for a period of time about that particular target, um, just in case we were trying to reacquire it. So what I might need to do is come around and try and find our next set of targets. Let's see if we can pick somebody else up here. Bump it out for a moment, and there we go, there's another target. I'm gonna go ahead and lock up whatever that is, if we can. Nope, nothing. Didn't get him. Uh, I'm actually going to quickly cheat. Ah, right, they're all behind me. That's what the problem is. So let's come all the way around and take the next uh, ne take the next target here, but this time we'll go straight into PIC or STT, as it's called. see here. Yep, that should be about right now. Let's see if we can get a target. Q 
using the declutter there to get rid of our memory target. Yeah, I'm still not finding anything. Oh, there we go. Found one. There's a target. And we have a lock. We're in single target track straight away, and we have the tier indication. So let's maneuver for a shot. Pull the trigger. Hold. Fox 1. It's a very short time of flight this time. This might actually be... Yep, that's a miss. That's a miss. Missile was unable to track there. That's what that cross indicated. Oh, well. That was unfortunate. And that's both of our missiles out. We now don't have anything else with which to engage this chappy. So uh, I could be naughty, of course, and go guns. We don't want to finish a mission without killing something. Oh, there we go. That did the trick. Cool. Alrighty. So that was a bonus there. Uh, me actually engaging with guns. Uh, and just for your information, I did that by uh, pushing the CNM switch forward to immediately go into the, the guns override. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> Very nice. Cool. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed that. That was a quick demonstration of the Matra Super 530D missile, both in uh, the TWS or the PID mode uh, and in the STT pick modes. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. Also, if you'd like to further support the channel, you have the option of joining Deep Hacks Ground Crew by pressing the join button below. Thank you very much to those of you who've already done so. Harish Rajan, Byron Farrow, Storm Kambari, Channel Wright, Mangash, J.R. Walker, Chandler Hedgevald, Griff Nizzle, Mr. Yeti, Frantic Stone, Bread, Tier Zero, Erdin Kirtan, Billy Tapani Korpikanas, Tiger Moto, Mitch, Mike Delta, Plucky Underdog, Fault River, Guitar Junkie 14, Sean I Am 81, Charts, and Pink Floyd. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.